Crossing the realm of cultivating immortals, Qin Shou not only did not become the son of the rebellious Qi Luk, but also became a useless person who was unable to cultivate. He had no choice but to become an ordinary secular person. After more than a decade of hard work, he finally rose to the top of the ranks and became the king of the Xia dynasty, standing shoulder to shoulder. But at this moment, what he was waiting for was not enjoyment, but a glass of poisonous wine. Fortunately, when he was on the brink of death, he awakened the multi-child and multi-blessing system, and as long as he had more children, he could become stronger. Since that's the case, then I won't hesitate. Chapter 1 Prince, let's go. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Pure entertainment, don't be brainy, don't compensate if it breaks down North Star Domain Baitian Continent the imperial capital of the Great Xia Empire, my city. Standing side by side, you don't need to make meaningless resistance, it's useless. At this moment, bodies were scattered everywhere in the mansion of the Great Xia, with blood flowing down the river. Qin Shou was covered in blood stains, holding a sword with one hand and staring coldly at the countless Great Xia forbidden army in front of him. Just now, the last personal guard standing in front of Qin Shou fell, and all his people in the entire royal palace died in battle. Now, he is the only one left. Looking at Li Shi's close eunuch in front of him, Qin Shou's eyes were bloodshot, and the hatred in his eyes was as if it were real. Wang Dafu and Li Shi are doing very well. I have devoted all my efforts to Xia, but what I did not expect was a charge of conspiring to rebel. Aren't you afraid of soldiers' coldness and people's discussion when you treat meritorious officials like this? Soldiers' hearts are cold, and the world is debating. So what? Your Majesty only wants you to die. Only when you die will Your Majesty sleep peacefully. As for what will happen to the world after you die, it doesn't need the prince to worry about it. Wang Dafu looked at Qin Shou coldly, as if he had not even taken his hateful gaze to heart. Someone, take the prince down for our family. Come on, I'm afraid you won't succeed. One by one, I'll kill one. Qin Shou shouted with his sword pointing towards the soldiers advancing, his voice filled with sadness, anger, and despair. The soldiers saw his appearance and were intimidated by his aura. For a moment, no one dared to step forward. No wonder they are facing the victorious great Xia god of war, and the soldiers have a deep fear of Qin Shou, the king standing side by side. It's not a problem for them to kill others, but they are afraid to kill this notorious king who is standing shoulder to shoulder. Ha <laughs> ha! Qin Shou couldn't help but burst out laughing at this scene, with a hint of self-deprecation in his laughter. He came to this world more than a decade ago, without spiritual roots, he could only choose to fight in the secular world. Over the past decade, he has fought hundreds of battles, big and small, without any defeat. And it was precisely through his strategic planning that the territory of Dashia expanded and expanded, but he did not expect such an outcome in the end, which must be said to be very ironic. Ancestors, I apologize to you, Qin Shou, for not remembering your lesson. Qin Shou exclaimed in sorrow and anger, and the ancestor he spoke of was naturally the ancestor on that mysterious planet. For thousands of years, countless facts have been presented before him, and those who have achieved great success have not ended well. He never expected that they would still be effective in this world. It's useless. As an ordinary person, he's afraid of doing something. Let me go up and catch him. Whoever retreats from the miscellaneous family will be killed. Wang Dafu shouted angrily when he saw the soldiers retreating. The soldiers heard his anger and had to move forward in order to survive. Wang Dafu was right, Qin Shou was just an ordinary person who should not be afraid. With three or two strokes, his long sword was picked off and fell to the ground, then his hands were caught. Wang Dafu saw Qin Shou being easily taken down, and a relaxed smile appeared on his face. He walked up to Qin Shou and slapped his shoulder, kneeled down for the miscellaneous family. Qin Shou only felt a pain in his shoulder, almost being smashed, and this tremendous force made him unable to stand and kneel on the ground with both legs. Pooh! 
the proud Wang Dafu of Qin Shouchao spat out a mouthful of saliva. But he easily dodged it. Huh, I can't believe that even with the word high and mighty standing side by side, Wang would kneel down for the miscellaneous family one day. Wang Dafu laughed proudly, someone, serve wine. As his voice fell, a eunuch held a plate with a wine jug inside. Qin Shou doesn't need to think to know what's inside this wine pot. Prince, you should be grateful to your majesty. Your majesty wants you to leave the whole body, but fortunately you won't be unable to reincarnate after death. Wang Dafu squinted his eyes, pinched Qin Shou's mouth with his left hand, and took a wine jug filled with poisonous wine with his right hand and poured it into Qin Shou's mouth. Qin Shou didn't struggle, his whole body was under control, and struggling was useless. He just didn't expect to be insulted by this eunuch before his death, which made him very unwilling. In just half a minute, he poured all the wine into Qin Shou's mouth. Seeing Qin Shou eager to eat his gaze, Wang Dafu's smile was particularly bright. Let go of him. Seeing that the overall situation had been decided, Wang Dafu let go of the two soldiers holding on to Qin Shou's shoulders. Wang Dafu, go back and tell Li Shi that even if I were a ghost, I wouldn't let him go. Qin Shou finished speaking and spat out a mouthful of black blood, his body unable to resist retreating. Prince, please rest assured on your journey. We will tell your majesty what you say, Wang Dafu looked at Qin Shou with a hint of mockery in his eyes. Pu, Qin Shou spat out a mouthful of blood and then fell straight back. Alas, if I had known so much, why bother working so hard? It's better to marry a few wives and be an ordinary person happily. Before his death, Qin Shou couldn't help but feel that his efforts were not worth it. Ding, detected the host's sudden awakening and activation of the Duozi Duofu system. Detected a life crisis on the host, system brute force repair. The host's body has been successfully repaired, and the host has gained martial saint level strength for 30 minutes. Upon hearing the sound of system activation, Qin Shou burst into laughter. Now that the system has given him the level of martial saint, escaping from my city is no longer a dream. Watching Qin Shou, who had already been poisoned to death, suddenly recover and stand up, both Wang Dafu and the soldiers looked at him like ghosts. You, you're not dead. And you know martial arts, how could that be? You've been pretending all these years. Wang Dafu's tone was full of shock. He couldn't help but easily drank a whole pot of poisonous wine and not only didn't die, but also exuded a terrifying aura from his body. Kill Qin Shou did not answer his words, but directly killed Wang Dafu, and his powerful momentum instantly shook the soldiers around him and sent them flying backwards. The soldiers who were shaken by him spewed blood in the air, then landed without a sound. But Wang Dafu was furious when he saw Qin Shou so brave and killed more than ten soldiers in an instant. The prince has a clever plan. If it weren't for this pot of poisonous wine, I don't know how long the prince would have hidden it. Faced with Wang Dafu's incessant chatter, Qin Shou ignored him and went out to kill him. He only had thirty minutes. If he were to go out and join the Xuanwu army outside the city, he would be able to overcome this crisis. If he cannot leave within thirty minutes, then there is only one result waiting for him, and it is still death. So he walked outside directly, slapped each soldier in the air, and sent them to Jiuquan. If you want to leave, let's see if our family agrees. Wang Dafu watched as Qin Shou, who had gained great power, jumped up into the air and rushed towards him. Chapter 2 Kill him without leaving a trace. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Seeing Wang Dafu pouncing on him, Qin Shou kicked the weapon dropped by the soldier on the ground, and in an instant, the weapon flew towards Wang Dafu at lightning speed. Wang Dafu felt the powerful momentum on the weapon and didn't dare to be careless. He used his internal power to slap the weapon's side with a palm. Originally, Qin Shou wanted to use this as a way to distance himself from Wang Dafu, but he didn't expect Wang Dafu's martial arts skills to be so high. He flew the weapon he kicked and then rushed towards him. 
In an instant, the two of them clashed, and the soldiers who were originally surrounded in the courtyard couldn't withstand the battle of the Marshal Saint level powerhouses. They were shocked to death by the powerful momentum before they could even run away, leaving them in ruins. A howl of sorrow. Wang Dafu seems to have no concern for the life and death of these soldiers, and his aura has not restrained at all. And Qin Shou didn't care anymore. These people were here to kill him, so since they were here to kill him, he naturally didn't need any mercy. So the worst part of the battle between the two was with these soldiers, who collapsed one by one. Die. Qin Shou swung Wang Dafu away with a single blow, and Wang Dafu, who had been swung away, brought down a large number of soldiers, causing a series of ups and downs. At this moment, Wang Dafu was extremely shocked in his heart. He didn't expect Qin Shou to be so strong that even he could say that he could split and fly, and he couldn't catch it at all. Archer, shoot for the miscellaneous family. Wang Dafu, who fell among the soldiers, did not choose to bully himself but instead let the soldiers shoot arrows. The soldiers who were not affected on the periphery immediately released their bows upon hearing his words, and a dense array of arrows shot towards Qin Shoufei in the center. Qin Shouden held a sword in his hand and was fearless. He let out a loud shout, and the arrow that was originally flying towards him instantly flew back at a faster speed. The arrows flying backwards left these soldiers with no time to dodge, and they were directly pierced by the arrows they had shot through their chests. Countless people died without even having a chance to make a sound. As they circled around, the courtyard, which was originally filled with soldiers, was left with only Qin Shou and Wang Dafu. Wang Dafu couldn't help but feel a moment of silence when he saw this scene. This cat is really too fierce. Just now, his pride has been completely thrown into the air by him. This is not an ordinary person who is rumored to not know how to cultivate, it is simply a killing god. He forgot that Qin Shou's nickname was the Jade-Faced King of Hell. Although he was not a killer, the number of people who died under the soldiers he led was probably not less than a million. Wang Dafu, just now you made me kneel down feeling very happy, didn't you? You should know that some people's gifts are unbearable for most people, so now you can go and die. After Qin Shou finished speaking, he went to kill Wang Dafu. Wang Dafu's strength was not as strong as him, so killing him should not take long. So he didn't choose to escape immediately, but rather to kill Wang Dafu and silence him. Wang Dafu had a bitter heart, but he didn't expect the hunter and prey to switch so quickly. Although he wanted to escape, he knew that the faster he escaped, the faster he died, so he had to fight hard. But without much effort, he was fiercely stabbed into the soil by Qin Shou, spraying a large puddle of blood. As soon as Wang Dafu got up, he was kicked directly on the back by Qin Shou. Suddenly, he sprayed out a mouthful of blood and flew several meters away, landing on the ground and rolling a few times. At this moment, Wang Dafu had already lost his arrogance and pride, and he was just a dying struggling dog. Qin Shou came to his side and looked at him from a condescending position. In his frightened gaze, he stabbed a knife directly into his chest. Wang Dafu was directly shattered by this powerful blow. After finishing all of this, Qin Shou threw his knife to the ground and glanced at the once golden and magnificent palace, which had already been stained red with blood. A fire was lit in the palace side by side. In an instant, the fire ignited violently, and in the flames, a figure gradually faded away. Thirty miles outside my city, there was a large camp of the Xuanwu army. The commander of the Xuanwu army, Zhou Jian, looked at Qin Shou, who was covered in blood, with a look of panic on his face. What's wrong with you, prince? Why is your whole body covered in blood? It's nothing, it's just killing some people. Qin Shou's face remained calm. Now that he has arrived at the Xuanwu army camp, he won't worry about his life's safety. Prince, what's going on here? You're not staying in the city, why are you all covered in blood and running to my military camp? If it weren't for following you for so many years, I wouldn't even believe this scene was real. Li Shi said I conspired to rebel, 
so he sent someone to slaughter the entire royal palace. If it weren't for the help of a high dot ranking official, I might have died a long time ago. Can I stay in this my city? What, how could this be? Upon hearing his words, Zhou Jian couldn't help but turn pale and take several steps back. This fact was so big that he never thought such a thing would happen before. It was a long time before Zhou Jian regained his senses and said, Prince, are you not injured? Do you want the military doctor to show you? I'm fine, I guess Li Shi also thought I was dead, so my current news cannot be exposed. If exposed, not only will you be in danger, but the Xuanwu army may also fall into danger. Prince, since Li Shi is not kind to you, what should we do next? Zhou Jian knew that at the moment Qin Shou appeared in his tent, he could no longer stand aside. Now he has only two options, one is to hand over Qin Shou and follow the court. The second is to strictly keep it confidential and follow Qin Shou. He naturally chose the second choice without hesitation, as he was personally brought out by Qin Shou. At that time, he was just a soldier, and it was Qin Shou who gradually cultivated him. Qin Shou could be said to be his mentor, which is not an exaggeration. This is also why Qin Shou came to find him, because Qin Shou knew that Zhou Jian would not betray him. Immediately send someone to deliver a message to the extraordinary people, asking them to bring several legions over. There is nothing in this world that the king dare not do, only things that he wants to do. But first, you need someone to prepare a bucket of hot water for me. My whole body is covered in blood, which is really uncomfortable. Yes. Zhou Jian was excited in his heart, but he didn't expect to reach this point in the end. This was something that Qin Shou's confidence had always wanted to say but dared not. I didn't expect Li Shi to die on his own now, helping to force their teacher to make a choice, so he couldn't help but feel a little grateful to Li Shi. The hot water was quickly ready, and Qin Shou was soaking in it. The events that happened tonight kept spinning in his mind, feeling like he was dreaming. He not only faced a life and death crisis, but also activated the system. Originally, he thought he didn't have a golden finger, but it turned out that the reason for the lack of activation was due to the mismatch between the system and his thoughts. If I had known so, Qin Shou sighed, but it was not too late now. However, in order to have a good environment for childbirth, rebellion was his first choice. Chapter 3 the Gathering of the Five Armies You are listening at Novel Full Dot Audio. Ten days later, in the Purple Jade Valley, thirty miles away from Akino City. Just now, the 100000 Qinglong army led by Chu Yang, the 100,000 Juke army led by Lu Bufan, the 100000 White Tiger army led by Murong Wudi and the 100000 defeat army led by Wan Qianjun, totaling 400,000 troops, arrived at the Purple Jade Valley and joined forces with the 100000 Xuanwu army led by Zhou Jian. At the end, Zhou Jian, the last general Chu Yang, the last general Lu Bufan, the last general Murong is invincible, at the end of the day, there will be a thousand thousand heavy burdens. Leading the Xuanwu army, Qinglong army, Juke Army, Baihu Army, and Palu Army, I have met the Grand Marshal. See Marshal. As the words of the main generals of the Five Root Army fell, the 500,000 soldiers shouted loudly at the same time, causing a deafening uproar. The birds were stunned by the huge sound waves and fell straight from the air. Ladies and gentlemen, get up. Xie De Shui. Qin Shou looked down at the 500,000 elite soldiers and strong generals below, all of whom were soldiers he had personally trained. These generals were all personally taught military tactics by him, gradually cultivating one out of 10,000 generals. I'm sure everyone is surprised why general I gathered you here. It's because this country can no longer accommodate the existence of the king, and there is no place for him to survive. I don't want to be enemies with De Xia either. However, now that the emperor is in a coma and harms loyalty and righteousness, if it weren't for my great fortune, I would have died ten days ago. To be honest, I don't want to die. 
we have established a large territory for the great Xia, but in exchange, we slandered my rebellion, gave me a pot of poison wine, and they even slaughtered unrelated people in the palace. Such a despicable act can be said to be a matter of mutual indignation between humans and gods. I don't seek revenge for myself, but only for those innocent people who died in vain. So I have decided to turn around from now on. Qin Shou's face turned red and he shouted at the top of his voice, hoping to spread his voice as far as possible. When Chu Yang, Lu Bufan, Murong Wudi, and Wan Qianjun heard that Qin Shou had been given poisoned wine and almost died, they immediately showed a fierce look. After Qin Shou finished speaking, he shouted loudly, it's reversed. Reverse, 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 a force of 500,000 shouted three times in opposition, breaking through the clouds and making it clear to the soldiers and civilians of Makino City, who were 30 miles away. They only heard two words reversed, and couldn't hear anything else. But with such a high voice and these two words, the meaning is obvious. For a moment, everyone couldn't help but feel fearful, and not long after the king's death, someone planned to rebel. How could this not make the residents of my city worry? And when Li Shi, the great Xia emperor in the palace, and other officials in the great Xia capital heard such words, their faces also turned pale. Thinking of the inexplicable disappearance of the Xuanwu army, Li Shi already had an ominous premonition in his heart, so he quickly sent someone to transfer the 200,000 forbidden troops originally stationed outside the city into the city to prevent accidents. In the Purple Jade Valley, Qin Shou gestured with his hand for everyone to stop and had someone bring the wine. This bowl of wine is a tribute to the emperor, hoping that the heavens will understand that our actions are inevitable, for the sake of righteousness and to uphold justice for heaven. Qin Shou finished speaking and poured the wine from the bowl onto the ground. Respectful to the emperor. 500,000 soldiers shouted at the same time. This second bowl of wine is a tribute to the thick soil. I hope that the land dyed red with our blood can become a paradise for our future generations to settle down and make a living. Respect the thick soil. 500,000 soldiers shouted at the same time. After Qin Shou finished speaking, he sprinkled his second bowl of wine onto the ground, with a serious expression and a respectful expression on his face. This third bowl of wine, I respect all brothers' unwavering commitment. I swear here that in the future, we will all be brothers, and we will share blessings and difficulties together. If we swear for this, we will be struck by thunder and lightning. Sharing blessings and difficulties together, sharing blessings and difficulties together, sharing blessings and difficulties together, after Qin Shou finished speaking, he smashed the bowl in his hand to the ground, bit his finger with his mouth, and then drew three bloodlines directly on his forehead with fresh blood. At this moment, the momentum of the 500,000 strong army reached its peak, and like him, he bit through his fingers and drew three red straight lines in front of his forehead. Zhou Jian, Chu Yang, Lu Bufan, Murong Wudi, Wan Qianjun, the end will come. The five of them had a rainbow like aura and sounded like a bell. Hold the army, take my city straight. Qin Shou pointed his long sword at my city. Order. The five of them received the order and immediately reorganized the army. For a moment, dust was flying in Purple Jade Valley, and the sound was deafening. On the other side, the scouts in my city learned that Qin Shou was still alive, and when Qin Shou's five legions gathered in Ziyu Valley, they were all scared to death. No matter who, seeing such a scene would make one feel panicked and scared, and in the end, a well-dot-trained scout gritted his teeth and ran back to report the news. When the great Xia officials gathered in the palace heard such news, their faces turned pale one by one, and those who were timid sat down on the ground in fear. Others still have confidence in holding on to the rebellion of my city, but if it is a single word of unparalleled prestige standing side by side, who can withstand the rebellion of the king? And isn't the one character side by side king dead, but what's going on with this one character side by side king now? All the ministers turned their gaze to Li Shi, who also turned pale. However, he remained calm and said to the minister below, someone deliberately counterfeited the king of the two sides. 
the king of the two sides was killed by criminals, and the house of the two sides was set on fire. These malicious people are trying to use this to impersonate the king of the two sides and engage in rebellion. Li Shi's heart was in a panic, after all, none of the people he sent had returned, and even Wang Dafu had disappeared. So he doesn't know whether Qin Shou died or not. But his words did not dispel everyone's doubts, after all, how could the king who was standing side by side be killed, and the royal mansion was completely burned down? Don't worry, there are hundreds of thousands of troops in my city, and it's not difficult to defend the city. As long as you hold on for a few days, the armies of the diligent kings from all over will soon arrive. Although the five armies trained by the king side by side cannot be underestimated, they are not gods. Upon hearing Li Shi's words, the courtiers also breathed a sigh of relief, and suddenly someone stood up to curse and guide the country. On the other side, Qin Shou personally led a massive army of 500,000 to rush towards my city. The reason why he did not hide was to bring deterrence to the defenders of my city. A blow to the confidence of Li Shi and the courtiers of De Xia in Makino Castle. And he is very familiar with the defenders of Mai Cheng. With these hundreds of thousands of Taiping soldiers who have been staying in the capital for years, how can he resist his 500,000 tiger and wolf armies who have been fighting outside for years? The journey of over 30 miles was just a short distance, and the army arrived outside the Makino city in a moment. Seeing the towering Makino city, Qin Shou did not immediately choose to attack it, but instead asked the army to arrange their formation. He wants to give the defenders in Makino City a chance, a chance to survive. Chapter 4 Rebellion You are listening at NovelFull.audio The people upstairs are listening, I am the king standing shoulder to shoulder with the word, Desya. I believe you must also think that I am dead, but I am not dead. I think you also know that my king's mansion was set on fire. You certainly don't know who did it, it was done by your majesty Li Shi. He slandered my king for plotting rebellion, so not only did he send the imperial army to slaughter the palace next to him, but my king almost died under the sword of the imperial army Qin Shou rode on a high dot altitude snow wolf with extraordinary momentum. His words were not only heard by the defenders on the city head, but also by the people inside the city. When the defenders saw his appearance, they were already fearful, and hearing his words made their morale plummet. I know many of you may not believe that your majesty would do this, but in fact, I don't believe it either. I just trusted him too much, that's why I was treated like this. Fortunately, the heavens pitifully see that I have not died. Heaven knows that I have suffered great injustice, so he will not let me die. I came back to collect debts this time. I have been fighting for more than ten years for the sake of the great Xiao. In exchange, it is not a matter of achieving success or fame, but a charge of rebellion. Do you think I am willing? So, brothers upstairs, abandon the dark and turn to the bright. We are still a family. If we stubbornly resist in a corner, we will be killed without mercy. Kill without mercy. Kill without mercy. Kill without mercy. The huge sound waves emitted by 500,000 people seemed to shatter the walls of Makino Castle. Faced with the overwhelming momentum, the defenders on the city tower turned pale as earth. They have all enjoyed peaceful days for too long and have lost their combat effectiveness. What they have to face even more is the one-word side-by-side king known as the Jade-Faced King of Hell, the invincible and invincible god of war. What about the general? He's the king standing next to him, and behind him are the most elite soldiers of 500,000 Xiao. Can I hold on? Looking at the soldier beside him who was already scared out of control, a deputy general asked the equally ugly defending general beside him. If we can hold on, if we can't hold on, we must hold on. We are soldiers, and although the king alongside has been treated unfairly, he is now a traitor. So let's all cheer up for this general. The king alongside is also human, not divine. The general saw that the soldiers had no morale and shouted loudly to boost their morale, but obviously his words did not have much effect. 
After all, the power accumulated by Qin Shou over the past decade is too great. Faced with such a person, they cannot resist at all. Moreover, the 500,000 strong army outside the city is as imposing as a rainbow, and they do not believe they can hold on. Chu Yang told them, if you don't surrender after shouting three times, attack the city. Qin Shou felt a bit hoarse in his throat, so he handed the task to Chu Yang who was following him. Delying, Chu Yang replied loudly and then shouted at the top of his throat, Listen, our marshal has said that if you don't surrender after three calls, we will attack the city. Chu Yang's words once again caused a commotion among the defenders on the city wall. Faced with such a commotion, the defending generals angrily rebuked each other but had little effect. After all, the city wall is so long that he cannot manage a large area. 3, 2, 1, shoot arrows, with the wave of the flag of Chuyang, arrows flew towards the city wall in an instant. There are too many arrows, forming a dark cloud. Watching the arrows flying in all directions, the defenders on the city wall quickly hid by the side of the wall. Those who didn't have time to dodge were instantly shot into a hornet's nest, killing tens of thousands with a round of bows and arrows. Go and smash open the city gate. Seeing the defenders on the city wall being suppressed by arrows, Qin Shou waved his hand and commanded the siege team to break open the city gate. After the order was issued, a prepared siege team of several hundred people pushed their vehicles towards the city gate and quickly approached. A huge impact hammer on top of the car, which required two people to embrace each other to hold on to, flickered with a cold light. With a loud bang, the car slammed fiercely into the city gate, causing it to make a loud creaking sound. The tremendous impact made the entire earth tremble. The soldiers guarding behind the door were shaken and even killed on the spot by tremendous force. After several consecutive impacts, the gate was finally shattered, and in an instant, countless armies rushed into the shattered city gate. At this moment, everyone in the summer palace remained silent as if they were cicadas. Your Majesty, the person who came here is indeed a side-by-side -side king, and that a side-by-side -side king is still scolding you outside the city for slandering him for rebelling and sending the forbidden army to slaughter the royal palace. Upon hearing the messenger's words, Li Shi couldn't help but turn pale. How did this news come out? How did Qin Shou escape from heaven? And some of the ministers below looked at Li Shi with incredulous eyes. Now they finally understood why the royal mansion was burned down word for word, and that emotions were a good thing done by His Majesty. Fortunately, their emotions were still passionate just now. Your Majesty, this is a thief shouting to catch a thief. However, they also understand the reason why Li Shi did this in order to achieve the feat and reputation of standing shoulder to shoulder with the king. Just because he did it, he couldn't do any better. Now it's okay, no one died, they rebelled. Some ministers were already at odds with Qin Shou's attack, and they didn't believe that my city could be defended. But before they could react, another messenger ran in and said, Report, they're starting to attack the city. The enemy's attack is too fierce, and our defenders on the city wall are unable to counterattack. Not long after this messenger left, another messenger ran in and said, Report, the southern gate has been broken, and the king has led a large army into the city side by side. Ah! Upon hearing the messenger's words, Li Shiduan was furious and let out a scream of blood. Your Majesty, Your Majesty, Li Shi's reaction made everyone couldn't help but worry about him. Li Shi said weakly, order all the defenders to come back, close the palace gates tightly, and defend the palace. After speaking, Li Shi closed his eyes and passed out. Qin Shou ordered the Vermilion Bird Army to be stationed outside the city as a precaution, while the other four legions followed him into the city. After entering the city, countless surrendered soldiers knelt on the ground, but Qin Shou ignored them and ordered the army to march towards the palace. I hope to break through the palace in one fell swoop and end this war. Chong, arriving outside the palace, Li Shi actually planned to gather the soldiers outside to strengthen the palace's security. Qin Shou couldn't help but curse out his foolishness, 
and as he watched the chaotic formation of the Forbidden Army at the entrance of the palace, Qin showed directly order to enter the palace. In an instant, hundreds of thousands of troops turned into a torrent and swept towards the palace. The defenders on the city wall saw the incoming enemy and quickly blocked them with bows and arrows. But the distance was too close, and before they could shoot the first round of bows and arrows, the Xuanwu army had already rushed to the city gate. In an instant, blood flowed into the city gate, and the people inside were in chaos. The gatekeeper couldn't even close the door. Seeing this scene, the commander of the Forbidden Army couldn't help but let out a long sigh and gave up his command. He was very disappointed with Li Shi's foolish act of ordering the outside army to withdraw into the palace at the last moment. So as soon as the defenders on the city wall finished shooting a round of arrows, the palace gate had already been breached. With the influx of the army, those in the way were mercilessly killed. Due to losing command, the forbidden army immediately put down their weapons and surrendered with their heads in their arms. In just half an hour, the entire palace was completely under Qin Shou's control. Qin Shou looked at the scene before him and smiled with satisfaction. Chapter 5 Your Majesty, let's go. You are listening at NovelFull.audio Zhou Jian, you need to reorganize these surrendered troops outside the city and send someone to let Lu Bufan lead Zhu Chueji into my city to maintain order inside the city. Those who dare to disturb the people and commit evil will be killed without mercy. Standing on the steps paved with white jade in the Great Xia Palace, Qin Shou issued orders. Zhou Jian received the order and immediately went down to execute it. Murong is invincible, with thousands of Jun and Chuyang. The end will be in, you three will follow me into the palace. It's time to meet our emperor, Qin Shou said with a smile as he looked at the towering and magnificent Dashia Palace. I swear to follow the Grand Marshal to the death. The three of them shouted loudly, and none of them expected that this battle would be so easy. The entire summer palace and the capital would fall into their hands so easily. Not even experiencing any resistance, all of this is too dreamy. Of course, they also knew that the reason why it was so easy was largely due to the strong deterrent power of Qin Shou, the king who stood side by side, and the unpopular approach of Li Shi's sacrifice. Anyway, they are all winners, and from now on, the Xia is the person they admire and respect the most, not the Li family's de Xia. At this moment, everyone in the entire summer palace was trembling and waiting for the judgment of fate. Qin Shou led Murong Wudi, Wan Qian Jun, and Chu Yang into the main hall where the great Xia usually held court meetings. He didn't pay much attention to the people inside who looked at him, whether they were angry, fearful, or any other kind of gaze. Ha, huh, everyone, don't be safe. Qin Shou laughed as he walked through the crowd, and Murong Wudi and his three companions tightly protected him. Qin Shou, how could you behave like such a beast? Are you worthy of your majesty's important position and the late emperors of the great Xia? You are simply inferior to a beast. Suddenly, a minister jumped out and pointed at Qin Shou, cursing profusely, no matter how unpleasant it was. Qin Shou looked at the person who scolded him with a smile. At first glance, he saw that he was a loyal fan of Li Shi, so what was the use of keeping it? Someone, pull this adult down and chop him down. Let him go to the late emperor of the great Xia to reprimand this handsome skilt. At the same time, send someone to send their family away together. Upon hearing Qin Shou's words, all the ministers in the palace couldn't help but take a breath of cold air. The title of Jade-Faced King of Hell was indeed not a baseless claim. Qin Shou, if you don't want to die easily, you will be punished by heaven. The minister, who was sandwiched between two soldiers, had a grim expression on his face, but his mouth didn't stop. But soon there was no sound, and Qin Shou was very satisfied. He looked around and said, is anyone else standing up to show loyalty to Li Shi? Yes, hurry up. The steps outside are not bright enough, and more blood is needed to dye him red. Everyone couldn't help but feel their scalp tingling. 
this is really a demon who kills without blinking an eye. Before, this jade-faced king of hell was only dealing with enemies and they didn't feel much fear. But this act of annihilating the clan at any moment forced those who were still somewhat restless to give up. Dare, Chin Shou, you dare to rebel. Aren't you afraid to die without a whole body? Although you have 500,000 soldiers, Xia still has millions of soldiers. As long as they come, you will die without a place to bury yourself. Li Shi appeared to have weak legs at this moment, sitting on the dragon chair trembling all over his body and stuttering when speaking. Ha, huh, I am bold. I have made great contributions to the Xia. After more than a decade of warfare, the Xia's territory has doubled. I thought that as long as I was loyal, there would be nothing wrong. But what my loyalty brought in is your betrayal. Since God doesn't want me to die, it means I am just. God has instructed me to seek revenge. Qin Shou's face was filled with a smile. At this moment, he was already in control of the victory, so there was no need to be angry. As for the millions of troops you mentioned, just let them come and eliminate them together, and reorganize them. You, you, you. Li Shi didn't know what to say for a moment, pointing at Qin Shou, you, and you, unable to say a complete sentence. What do you want to do? Li Shi saw the cold light in Qin Shou's eyes wanton, sitting on the dragon chair huddled together with a fearful expression on his face. The courtiers in the main hall chose to close their eyes or turn their gaze elsewhere, unwilling to see this scene. Get out of here, how could you sit in this position? Qin Shou walked over and pulled Li Shi off the dragon chair. The Empress of Great Xia, who had been hollowed out by a woman, couldn't even match Qin Shou's strength. Qin Shou was a bit puzzled. Didn't he say that the Great Xia royal family practiced the Huangji Jingtao technique? Why is it so weak? He didn't know that Li Shi, like him, was an ordinary person who couldn't cultivate. The reason why Li Shi was able to take office was entirely because Wang Dafu felt that he was easy to control. Moreover, after ascending to power, Wang Dafu used various methods to kill all the experts of the Li royal family in order to ensure the stability of his throne. This is also why until now there have been no experts from the imperial family who have come forward, but these Qin Shou did not know, and many ministers did not know either. Don't kill me, Qin Shou. I was wrong. I shouldn't have treated you like this. It was all Wang Dafu's idea and he made me do it. He said you would threaten my throne in the future, so he wanted to kill you. At this moment, Li Shi actually knelt down for Qin Shou and constantly begged for mercy. Your Majesty, don't blame me for being ruthless. If you want to blame me, blame me for being the Emperor of Great Xia. Your Majesty, please rest assured and embark on your journey. I will send your family and children down to accompany you. Qin Shou returned what Wang Dafu had said to him that night to Li Shi. No, no, you can't kill me. Escort me, come protect me, come protect me. Li Shi watched as Qin Shou walked towards him with a sword in his hand, immediately falling to the ground in panic and constantly retreating. Then stepped back onto the steps and rolled down directly. Ah, Li Shi fell from the steps and let out a series of screams. He hurriedly got up and ran outside after falling. At this moment, Li Shi felt immense fear in his heart. Without Wang Dafu's protection, he was like a helpless child without parents. But at this moment, his ministers closed their eyes one by one, unwilling to see this scene. Come back, you. Seeing Li Shi frantically climbing out, Muron Wudi lifted him up and threw him down the steps. Don't kill me, don't, don't kill me. Due to excessive fear, Li Shi had become somewhat incoherent. Qin Shou slowly walked down from above, approached Li Shi, and looked at him from a condescending position, with no hint of pity in his eyes. Killed too many people, I no longer have any feelings, let alone a damn person. Don't kill me, don't kill me. Li Shi placed his hands on his chest and shrank into a ball. But his plea for mercy was not forgiven, but rather a dignified arrow piercing through his heart. Chapter 6 
Declaration of Emperor, Divine Dragon Empire. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. A scream of agony followed by a moment of calm. The courtiers of Dashia looked at Li Shi, who had died tragically, and remained silent one by one. No one dared to step forward and say a word. Qin Shou is very satisfied. Anyone who dares to step forward and say one more word will kill him today, and his blood will flow like a river. Qin Shou walked down from above and whispered a few words in his ear to Chu Yang's side. Chu Yang walked out of the hall with a clear understanding. Not long after, Zhou Jian and Lu Bufan came together and saw the situation inside the hall, both of them feeling delighted. General, the surrendered troops in Maicheng have been counted and restored to peace. This time, a total of 88,000 enemy soldiers were killed and more than 400,000 surrendered. There were also some scattered troops who did not pursue, about tens of thousands of people. Upon hearing Lu Bufan's report, Qin Shou nodded and said, let's run away. Once the city is stable, it's good. Order all the troops not to disturb the people. Yes. Qin Shou looked at the official in charge of managing the finances of the Great Xia and said, Mr. Hu, how much money is still in the treasury today? Returning to the prince, due to the prince bringing back a large amount of wealth from other countries in recent years, the Dashia treasury has approximately 300 million gold coins and over 1 billion silver coins. Hu Xia, the official in charge of Dashia's finance, dared not hesitate to answer Qin Shou's inquiry. No one knew now that the person in front of him was the future master of Dashia. Okay, take out 20 million gold coins to reward the army and compensate the people who suffered losses this time. You are responsible for this matter, can you do it well? Don't worry, my lord. I will definitely live up to everyone's expectations. Hu Xia was overjoyed when he heard Qin Shou's words, as there were not many opportunities for him to perform in front of the Xiaoxin's master. And these money are not his, no matter how much he gives, he doesn't feel sorry. Anyway, if the Xia runs out of money in the future, it's also Qin Shou, the new owner, who worries. Very good. Qin Shou said and turned to Zhou Jian, ordering, by the way, Jian, those who surrender will use what they can, and those who do not meet the standards will be sent home. Yes, General. Five days passed quickly, and after so many days of sedimentation, my city also regained peace, while the army of loyal kings from all directions expressed their loyalty to Qin Shou when they heard that the overall situation of the capital had been determined. Qin Shou also accepted their loyalty and after meeting them one by one, ordered them to lead their troops back to their original defense areas. In the Qingjing Hall of the Great Xia Imperial Palace, Don Ming, the Minister of Rights of the Great Xia, stood up and submitted a memorial, Prince, I have something to say. At this time, Qin Shou led the court in the name of the Regent King. Although he was the Regent King, he sat on a dragon chair. Speak up. Prince, as the saying goes, a country cannot be without a ruler for a day. Now that the royal family of the Great Xia has lost its bloodline, there is no one who can inherit the throne. Therefore, I dare to request the prince to ascend to the throne and proclaim himself emperor, in accordance with heaven. No, no, for hundreds of years since the founding of the Great Xia dynasty, it is impossible for the royal family to disappear, and there may be miracles. Qin Shou pretended to decline, but did not accept it immediately. The original courtiers of Dashia couldn't help but roll their eyes when they heard Qin Shou's words. Aren't you the one who ordered all the last blood of Dashia to be executed? And looking for an heir to the royal family, who will find one? Do you think you haven't lived long enough? Your Highness, now that the great Xia has no ruler, it is inevitable that it will cause national unrest. Please prioritize the safety of all the people in the world and the safety of the great Xia. Please ascend to the throne and proclaim yourself emperor. Please prioritize the overall situation and ascend to the throne as emperor. Please prioritize the overall situation and ascend to the throne as emperor. Please prioritize the overall situation and ascend to the throne as emperor. Suddenly, 
everyone knelt down and begged Qin Shou to ascend to the throne as emperor. Among them, the five people who shouted the loudest were Zhou Jian and Chu Yang. Some other ministers were already quite fond of Qin Shou, while others loyal to the Li family could only comply with the overall situation. Alas, originally I wanted to find a suitable successor for the Li royal family. However, so many days have passed without any success, just as Gan Shangshu said that the country cannot be without a ruler in a day. Since all the lords are so earnestly pleading, for the stability of the Great Xia and the people of the Great Xia, I can only reluctantly accept it first. As soon as Qin Shou finished speaking, a large number of palace maids rushed in and hurriedly put on Qin Shou's dragon robe. Subsequently, Qin Shou officially ascended to the throne and proclaimed himself emperor, and all procedures were exempted. Please see your majesty, long live my emperor. Let's all get up. Qin Shou, dressed in a dragon robe, couldn't help but feel a surge of emotion as he looked at the courtiers kneeling down below. Although he had planned this step, he still felt a bit excited at this moment. Your Majesty, thank you. The courtiers stood up and looked at the new emperor, unable to help but feel a lot for a moment. Since I have ascended to the throne as emperor and become the master of Dashya Xian, I have some thoughts to share. I feel that the name Dashya is no longer suitable for the future development of the country. Therefore, I have decided to officially change the name of the country from Dashya to Shenlong Empire, and set this year as the first year of Longshua, with my city being renamed as the Forbidden City. In the future, the country name of Dashya will be invalidated, and everything else will remain the same for the time being. Your Majesty is wise, and the name of the Dragon Empire is worthy of Your Majesty's divine power and the vast land and billions of people. Qin Shou smiled and immediately shouted to the audience below, Zhou Jian, Chu Yang, Lu Bufan, Murong Wudi, Wan Qian Jun. I am here. Five people stood up at the same time to respond, knowing that it was their turn to harvest the fruits now. Zhou Jian was appointed as the Prince of Ding, Chu Yang as the Prince of Chu, Lu Bufan as the Prince of Qi, Murong Wudi as the Prince of Xian, and Wan Qian Jun as the Prince of Kong. Qin Shou sealed five kings in one breath, without granting them land. They only controlled military affairs and did not care about finances, so he was not afraid of their rebellion. Your Majesty, thank you. The five of them blushed with excitement, they were just ordinary people, and being able to be crowned as kings and worshippers was the greatest wish of an ordinary person's life. Now that dreams come true, how can we not make them excited? Prince Ding will stay in the capital, while the four kings of Chu, Qi, Kong, and Xian will temporarily return to the place where your army was originally stationed. Moreover, you must immediately lead the army to set off, so as not to let other countries launch surprise attacks while you are not there. If the enemy country invades or provokes, I give you the right to launch an attack without reporting it first. Delhiing. The four of them were ordered to leave, which was already confirmed in the past few days. So what they should reward has already been rewarded in place. Even the big seal has been prepared for them. Subsequently, rewards were given to others one by one, especially to Qin Shou's 150000 strong army, where everyone was promoted to a higher level, which can be said to be joyful. Quickly, Qin Shou's first appearance as the emperor came to an end when he was still unsatisfied, and with his proclamation as emperor, the name Dashia also became history. Chapter 7 Breaking Through the Zhi Ju You are listening at NovelFull.audio In the next few days, Qin Shou, relying on the supreme power he had just killed, forcefully carried out a series of reforms on the already decaying and rigid empire. At this point, no courtier dared to stand up and challenge his authority, nor did anyone dare to say no to reform. So the reform has been carried out without reservation, and the people are the happiest about the reform. Because it has strengthened the development of agriculture, commerce, and military, and promoted martial arts academies nationwide to strengthen the concept of practicing martial arts and strengthening oneself. A month later, the turbulent and chaotic Dragon Empire completely stabilized. 
and neighboring countries were both worried and couldn't help but breathe a sigh of relief when they learned that he, the jade-faced king of hell, had ascended to the throne and proclaimed himself emperor. The concern is that he is afraid of taking office and continuing the path of expansion, and if he wants to expand, he will naturally have to take the knife from these neighboring countries. I breathed a sigh of relief because once he became emperor, he didn't have so many opportunities to go on military expeditions. I heard that this new dragon empire is still alone today. In order to keep him busy, various countries sent their most beautiful princesses over for marriage, and at the same time selected fifty beautiful women as their dowries to send along. The reason for giving so much is, of course, to make Qin Shi immerse himself in the gentle countryside every day, slowly eroding his will. Let him be satisfied with the status quo and not focus on their neighbors. For this point, the four major empires and a dozen small principalities in the surrounding area have surprisingly consistent ideas. And other countries are so proactive, so domestic ministers are naturally very proactive. After all, a country cannot be without a military or a future for a day. Now Qin Shi doesn't even have a concubine, let alone an empress. This is something that ministers will never allow. So for the past month, the Minister of Rights has been dedicated to selecting suitable women for His Majesty. Your Majesty, it has been over a month since you ascended the throne, but the harem is empty, which makes it difficult for the courtiers to settle their minds. I have selected ten national beauties and beauties from various families who have not yet left the court to fill Your Majesty's harem. Upon hearing the words of the Minister of Rights, Qin Shi was immediately overjoyed, as his system was a system of many sons and many blessings. If he wants to have more children, he naturally needs to marry more wives, but if he hurriedly shouts in the imperial harem just after ascending the throne, it will inevitably be embarrassing. So he only endured for over a month, and didn't expect the minister of rights to be so understanding. He had secretly searched for beautiful women for him, and there were only ten of them. However, he pretended and said, I am deeply moved by the considerations of all the beloved ministers, but wouldn't it be too much to have ten now? Your Majesty doesn't have many at all, the late Emperor. Well, there are over a hundred people in Li Shi's harem. You only have ten of them, not only not many, but also too few. Furthermore, which adult in this court does not have ten or eight women in their family? As the Emperor, you should have spread more branches and leaves for the stability of the Divine Dragon Empire. The Minister of Rights said that everything was right, which made Qin Shi unable to refute. In the end, he had to humbly accept it. Since that's the case, let's send them all to the harem. Give them the identity of a concubine first, and the Empress will discuss it for now. Yes. Upon seeing the Emperor's agreement, the Minister of Rights, Matthew, was also very happy. Through this communication, not only did he gain a good impression in front of His Majesty, but he also gained many benefits from other families. At night, Qin Shi walked into the dormitory with an excited heart, and by this time there were already beautiful women waiting in the palace. Thinking about being in this world for over a decade and finally being able to get rid of the title of child chicken, how can one not be excited? When he stepped into the dormitory, he saw a woman dressed in a green dress, resembling a fairy, contemplating. Upon hearing his footsteps, the woman quickly stood up with a shy expression on her face. Her eyes, like spring water on a river, dared not look at him and said, My concubine, Xia Wanrong, has seen your majesty before. Okay, Empress Ai doesn't need to be polite. Qin Shi quickly walked over and grabbed the beauty's hand to help her up. Your Majesty, oh, my careful liver. Qin Shi was hit by this soft and soft words, and suddenly felt weak all over. He hugged the beauty into his arms. Ah! The beauty was startled by his actions and couldn't help but scream in panic. Then he obediently lay in his arms, smelling the scent of the beauty, and Qin Shi got drunk. But he didn't take immediate action and hugged Xia Wanrong and said something. Originally, Xia Wanrong came from the Xia family in the four corners of the central city. This Xia family is not an ordinary family, as there are many cultivators in the family. 
Although Xie Wanrong is very beautiful, she has no talent for cultivation. So it was not popular in the family, so it was simply sent as a concubine to Qin Shou, the new emperor. It can also be considered as an attitude of their Xie family, acknowledging his identity as the new emperor. Empress Ai, it's late at night. Let's rest. May your majesty have mercy. Qin Shou felt a sudden fever in Dantian and immediately summoned the palace maids to change his clothes. Ding, it has been detected that the host has finally broken through life obstacles for the first time, rewarding the host with the golden kidney and one strike, one hit skill. Upon hearing the sound of the system, Qin Shou was pleasantly surprised and quickly checked the effectiveness of these two skills. Golden Kidney The strongest kidney in the world, greatly enhancing the regeneration ability of bullets and enhancing the host's combat ability. With endless life and endless battles, it provides the host with a state of being able to fight and having soldiers in battle. It also greatly reduces the consumption of the host's own essence. One Hit Hit Enhance the success rate of the host's offspring birth, avoiding the frustration caused by the host's repeated operations and getting nothing. After reading these two skills, Qin Shou was satisfied. I used to worry about how an ordinary person could withstand this constant consumption. After all, ancient emperors, unless they were cultivators, would anyone else be able to withstand the wear and tear of years and months of grinding spear stones? Now that he has the golden kidney, he no longer has to worry about it. Moreover, the skill of hitting with just one hit greatly improves the hit rate, eliminating the worry of difficult conception for him. With the blessing of his skills, Qin Shou immediately transformed into a beast and embarked on a bold journey of developing new paths. The palace made next to her suddenly blushed and became weak all over. Ding, when the host conceives offspring, it is detected that both the host and the spouse are mortal, and the host's lifespan consumption can enhance offspring. 1. Consuming a lifespan of 5 years, the offspring have a high probability of obtaining inferior spiritual roots, and a very low probability of obtaining medium and fake spiritual roots. 2. Consuming a lifespan of 10 years, the offspring have a high probability of obtaining medium-level spiritual roots, with a very low probability of obtaining top.grade and low.grade spiritual roots. 3. Consuming a lifespan of 20 years, the offspring have a high probability of obtaining top.grade spiritual roots, with a very low probability of obtaining top.grade and mid-grade spiritual roots Qin Shou was greatly shocked to see the system prompt, but he didn't expect the system to still perform this operation. Although this feature is very powerful, it also shortens one's life, which makes Qin Shou face difficulties. Chapter 8 Birth of the First Child You are listening at NovelFull.audio Your Majesty, what's wrong? Why did you stop? Qin Shou was in a difficult situation, so he took a break. Xie Wanrong asked in confusion. It's okay, let's continue, continue. Qin Shou gritted his teeth and fought, but Mada couldn't bear to let the child catch the wolf. The system shows that he still has 80 years of lifespan, as the saying goes, he needs to lay a solid foundation so that he can rest assured in the future. So he chose the third option directly, and as for the children behind him, it depends on their own destiny. Their abilities are limited now, and they cannot use their lifespan to strengthen each one. Otherwise, he would have hiccuped before his first child could have taken action. After gaining successful experience, Qin Shou lived a very comfortable life in the following period. He could change into different beauties every day, which is the joy of becoming an emperor. Your Majesty, Qingzhou Kingdom has sent a princess and fifty maids hoping to marry our divine dragon empire. How will Your Majesty handle this? Early in the morning, Qin Shou heard good news. Since everyone had arrived, there was no reason to send them back. Okay, I agree. Her princess and her maid will be sent to the Qingxue Palace. Yes, your majesty, the Sky Blue Empire has sent a princess and fifty maids hoping to marry our divine dragon empire. How will your majesty handle this? Your majesty, 
the kingdom of Ruren has sent a princess and fifty maids hoping to marry our divine dragon empire. How will your majesty handle this? Your majesty, the ghost has sent a princess and twenty maids hoping to marry our divine dragon empire. How will your majesty handle this? Your majesty, the Mayatako Empire has sent a princess and fifty maids hoping to marry our divine dragon empire. I wonder how your majesty will handle this. Listening to the series of countries sending princesses for marriage, Qin Shou felt his mind buzzing with excitement. Because it is obvious that Foreign Minister Smart has not finished reading, and indeed, the Kingdom of Ray, the Kingdom of Kalin, the Duchy of Fire Cloud, and the Kingdom of Lily have all sent princesses next. Since they have all agreed to one, if the countries behind them do not agree, it will definitely make them very embarrassed. So Qin Shou had to grit his teeth and let them all stay, after all, Ku himself wanted to keep the Dragon Empire stable. The current Dragon Empire still needs to settle, as it expanded too quickly in the past and had some unstable foundations. So now that someone else throws an olive branch, he cannot hit someone in the face. These days, the palace, which seemed somewhat empty because all the eunuchs were expelled by him from the palace, became lively again with the addition of these people. In order to maintain fairness, the dragon bed in Qin Shou's sleeping palace is getting bigger and bigger. There's no way, not doing so won't satisfy everyone at all. Eight months later, in the imperial harem of the Divine Dragon Empire, Qin Shou stood outside restlessly walking back and forth. He couldn't help but not be nervous, because Xia Wanrong was lying in bed sweating profusely, biting his teeth and riveting hard. Today is the time when his first child was born, and in the future, he will become a god or a ghost. It depends on whether this child's birth can truly bring him a qualitative change. With a cry breaking through the palace, Qin Shou's first child finally arrived in this world. Ding! Congratulations to the host for giving birth to a descendant of the top dot grade fire spirit root, obtaining the lower grade water and wood double spirit roots, obtaining a lifespan of 10 years, and obtaining the double cultivation technique for immortal cultivation. Upon hearing the system prompt, Qin Shou trembled with joy. It was really okay, the system didn't deceive him. Having a child can really make him stronger, and he can also cultivate immortality in the future. Qin Shou quickly opened a semi-transparent panel, name. Qin Shou, Identity. Emperor of the Divine Dragon Empire, Qualifications. Lower Grade Water Spirit Root, Lower Grade Wood Spirit Root, Realm. Mortal, Practice. Double Cultivation Technique, Descendants. 1. Life. 40. Watching himself suddenly transform from a lifeless root to an inferior water and with double spiritual root, Qin Shou felt like he was dreaming. You should know that there are few people with spiritual roots in the world, and even fewer with multiple spiritual roots. More spiritual roots mean more cultivation channels, and the cultivation speed is much faster than that of a single spiritual root. Of course, there is a prerequisite for this, which is that the spiritual roots of others are of the same level as theirs. Now he can not only rely on creating people to become stronger, but also through double cultivation to become stronger. His wife is so happy. He decided that from now on, all the fairies would belong to him, and he would take them all. No one would want to steal them. Your Majesty, the child was born smoothly and is a prince. The mother and son are safe. The midwife held the child and said to Qin Shou, but Qin Shou remained immersed in excitement and did not hear it. She didn't find it strange either, she only thought that Qin Shou was too excited about having descendants, so she said it again. Qin Shou listened attentively this time and quickly suppressed his excitement. He picked up the child from her arms and said, Reward, there is a reward. A person's spirit is refreshed during happy events, and only gold, silver, and money are at ease. Upon hearing his words, the midwife was naturally overjoyed and quickly thanked him. Qin Shou walked into the room holding the child and saw that although Xia Wanrong's face was a bit pale, his mental state was good. Wanrong, look at how cute our children are, and look at their mouths and eyes. 
Qin Shou came to Xia Wanrong's bed and kept talking. Xia Wanrong saw Qin Shou's happy expression and a happy expression on his face. Your Majesty, give the Emperor's son to my concubine's embrace, he said Qin Shou naturally did not refuse Xia Wanrong's request and quickly handed the child to her. Looking at the child he gave birth to, Xia Wanrong's face was filled with a loving expression. Your Majesty, please give the Emperor a name. Well, let me think. Qin Shou touched his chin and pondered for a moment before speaking up, since this child is my first child and was born into a luxurious and noble family, his future achievements will definitely be extraordinary. Let's call him Qin Feihu, the name sounds domineering. Qin Feihu, well, that's a good name. Let's call it Feihu. I hope Huer can be as powerful and fierce as a tiger in the future. At this moment, Qin Feihu seemed to feel something and couldn't help but grin. The two of them teased Qin Feihu for a while, but they didn't expect that this kid might have been hungry and suddenly started crying. Xia Wanrong quickly fed him milk. I don't shy away from Qin Shou being in front of her, because before Qin Feihu was born, it was Qin Shou who helped her solve problems. Qin Shou looked at this picture with a happy smirk, thinking that he still had more than twenty unborn children. When they were all born, the benefits he gained were simply not too pleasant. After obtaining the double cultivation technique, Qin Shou couldn't wait to invite the beautiful women sent by other countries to try it out at night, and the effect was very good. The double cultivation technique not only allows him to improve, but also changes the opponent's physique, which can be said to be completely unexpected joy. Five days later, Qin Shou's second child was born. Chapter 9 Enhancement You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Ding, congratulations to the host for giving birth to a descendant of the lower grade Jinlingen, who has obtained a lifespan of one year and a small level of skill improvement. In just half a month, Qin Shou had as many as ten offspring, and the first ten concubines who were granted titles all gave birth to offspring. This wave made Qin Shou win thoroughly. Qin Shou named them Qin Yu, Qin Wei, Qin Shi, Qin Beichen, Qin Muin, Qin Shui, Qin Ying, Qin Zhang, and Qin Lingyun. Name Qin Shou, Identity Emperor of the Divine Dragon Empire, Qualifications Lower Grade Water Spirit Root, Middle Grade Wood Spirit Root, Realm Qi Refining Phase 5, Practice Double Cultivation Technique Descendants. 10. Life. 60. Although three of the children did not have spiritual roots, it was still considered good, after all, he and his parents were both mortals before. The probability of conceiving offspring with spiritual roots without his intervention is too low. But it's not without surprises, for example, old Ten Qin Lingyun's character has exploded and her qualifications are top notch water spirit roots. You should know that this was entirely achieved by her own fate, relying on the favor of heaven. So Qin Shou gave her a name of Lingyun, and it was her birth that elevated Qin Shou's original low-grade Mu Lingjian to medium grade. Due to the birth of the child, Qin Shou wanted to find something to reward the women who gave birth to him, so he came to the treasure trove collected by the ancestors of the original Xia royal family. Oh, Qin Shou used to be too lazy to come to this treasure trove because the Dragon Empire was not short of money. But I didn't expect to almost startle his chin at this sight. It's filled with piles of gold coins and various exquisite items, at least hundreds of millions of gold coins. It's really rich. Passing through the ground paved with gold coins, we arrived at another storage room, which still contained objects such as gold coins. However, there were several bookshelves that caught Qin Shou's attention. After flipping through the techniques that were originally practiced by ordinary people, there are at least hundreds of them, but Qin Shou doesn't like them. Then he saw a box in the corner, and Qin Shou walked over to open it. It was filled with things that looked like jade, not jade, and were said to be stones but not stones. Qin Shou couldn't help but mutter softly when he saw this thing. Are these the spiritual stones that practitioners need to use when practicing? 
Feeling the pure spiritual energy emanating from the stone, Qin Shou was certain that this was the spiritual stone. Although Qin Shou had never seen Lingxia before, he had heard of it hundreds or even thousands of times. Because he couldn't practice and it was useless to have spiritual stones, he never paid attention to them. He couldn't believe that there was such a thing hidden in this treasure trove. Spirit stones are treasures in the eyes of cultivators, and they are also the common currency used in the cultivation world. The Divine Dragon Empire is not without spiritual stones and mineral veins, but they are all occupied by those cultivation sections. Although the Divine Dragon Empire manages billions of its people, it may seem incredibly powerful, but compared to cultivators, it is nothing. Just one small sect can slaughter the entire forbidden city, which is the tragedy of ordinary people. This is also the reason why practitioners are not allowed to interfere with the mortal world, otherwise Qin Shou would not be enough for others to play with. Just like now, although Qin Shoutsai is only in the period of refining qi, he can easily grasp the former Wang Dafu, which is the difference between cultivating immortals and practicing martial arts. Anyone with spiritual roots in the mortal world will be plundered clean by these sects, and secular dynasties have not yet cultivated talents to resist the cultivation sections. So Qin Shoutsai was so surprised by the presence of spirit stones in this treasure trove. Feeling the abundant spiritual energy on the spirit stones, Qin Shoutsai couldn't help but pick up a piece. Ding, detected absorbable items. Does the host choose to absorb them? System, what's the use of absorbing these spirit stones? Qin Shou couldn't help but be surprised when he heard that the system could still absorb spirit stones. The host can choose to increase cultivation and also choose to increase the host's lifespan. Surprisingly, one can absorb spirit stones to increase their lifespan. Isn't it true that as long as one continues to absorb spirit stones, they can live forever? Qin Shou's eyes suddenly lit up. Now that he only has a lifespan of 60 years, he could only increase his reward by having children. Unexpectedly, absorbing spirit stones was also possible, which suddenly aroused Qin Shou's infinite desire for spirit stones. As long as there are enough spirit stones and one has a long lifespan, they can enhance the spiritual root talent of their offspring. The stronger the spiritual root talent of the offspring, the better the rewards they will receive. This is a perfect closed loop, how can such a good thing not make him interested? But obtaining the spirit stone is even more difficult than climbing to the sky. System, which one do you think is better for me to choose? Before making a decision, Qin Shou decided to listen to the system's opinion. After all, the system is much more powerful than him, so it's definitely right to listen to him. Ding! The system recommends that the host choose to increase their lifespan, as the longer they live, the more opportunities they have. The system seems to be fine, but this year he has been very low. Key, seemingly completely immersed in the joy of creating people. Even many national affairs were left to the ministers, as long as they summarized and reported them to him. So, such a good emperor, shouldn't others think of getting rid of him? And this year, with stable borders and prosperous countries, other countries probably wouldn't want to attack the Dragon Empire, would they? So, with such a low dot key demeanor, he shouldn't have offended any powerful figures, just like Wang Dafu who secretly came over and killed him, right? Besides, he is no longer the weak chicken he used to be. As soon as the remaining dozen or so children are born in a few months, he is likely to break through the foundation building period. In the secular world, the foundation period should be almost invincible, right? Thinking of this, Qin Shou also made a decision, system, then absorb all these spirit stones and convert them into lifespan. Upon receiving his command, the spirit stone that was originally full of boxes disappeared instantly, and the sound of increasing lifespan kept coming from the system. But these spirit stones are still too few, only increasing his lifespan by 50 years. Qin Shou, who tasted the sweetness, continued to search in the treasure trove, hoping to find more spirit stones, but it clearly disappointed him. Now his lifespan has increased to 110 years, which is not a small gain. At least this time, 
he has discovered a shortcut to increase his lifespan. After Qin Shou distributed the selected items one by one to his woman, he came to the palace of Qian Huanxue and saw her holding Qin Lingyun and humming a song. When he saw Qin Shou, he quickly stood up with Qin Lingyun in his arms, intending to bow, but was stopped by Qin Shou's intervention. Your Majesty, why did you come to my place? Because these children have not yet undergone a talent test, Qian Huanxue still doesn't know that the child she is holding is a good seedling with top-dot-grade spiritual roots. Ha, huh, isn't that because of our little spirit rhyme? Qin Shou smiled and said, not explaining their intention from the beginning. Although they are all ordinary people, there should be some unexpected surprises. Thank you for your concern, Your Majesty. Qian Huanxue was naturally very happy about Qin Shou's love for her daughter. When she found out that she had given birth to a daughter, she was still worried that Qin Shou would like it. Finally, it proved that her concerns were completely unnecessary. Ha, huh, you are my woman, Ling Er is my child, so it's appropriate to worry. Why are you so polite? Qian Huanxue's face turned red at Qin Shou's words, but more importantly, it was happiness. They are just ordinary people who will die after living for decades or even centuries. Having a loving husband is the luckiest thing. Qin Shou walked over and hugged her in his arms, quietly taking out a jade hairpin and inserting it into her hair. Chapter 10 Arrangements You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. In the Forbidden City, a secret chamber of the Imperial Palace, Qin Shou sent someone a few days ago to summon all five of his subordinates, the Heavenly Kings. At this moment, several people are in this secret room, and six people are sitting around a table. Invincible, extraordinary, Chuyang and Qian Jun. When was the last time you left the capital? Qin Shou was too busy with making a name for himself all day, so he didn't bother to jot down many things. The four of them watched as their spirits improved and their authority grew stronger, and their eyes flickered with excitement as the emperor felt very shocked and happy. After all, as long as Qin Shou's health is good, it means their position is more stable. Your Majesty, the last time our four brothers left was three months ago, Chu Yang said with a smile. Judging from the four of them, it was evident that they were also living a comfortable life. Qin Shou did not actually kill all of Li Shi's family members, but instead rewarded them with honors for their meritorious service. Unless there is really no one interested, they will be killed. However, obviously there was no such opportunity. I heard that a general had a crush on the Empress Dowager, who was over sixty years old, and brought her home. It is estimated that he does not like such an elderly woman, but rather likes the other person's former identity. Accompanying such a woman by his side would give him another sense of achievement. As for the underage girls, they were arranged by him in a side hall of the Imperial Palace, and this was naturally done to protect them. I heard that Chu Yang has chosen two concubines, Li Shi. However, with so many concubines, most of them have not moved and have only been kept in the palace. So Qin Shou rebelled and killed Li Shi, which was a good thing for them. After all, those who can obtain them are mostly generals, after all, their former identities are there. Three months, it seems like a long time has passed for me. It seems like I've been with you guys for too long, and I'm not used to being separated. Upon hearing Qin Shou's warm words, several people smiled heartily. The four of them envied Zhou Jian for staying in the capital to accompany His Majesty and seeing His Majesty at all times. However, compared to others, they live more freely, so it can be said that there are gains and losses. We also miss your majesty, but as long as it is stable and useful for his majesty's country, we are willing to place us anywhere, Moron Woody said with utmost sincerity. What's there to worry about with you here? Qin Shou said and took out a few martial arts secret books he found from the treasure trove. Here are some secret books left by the previous dynasty. Let's see if you like them. Surprisingly, it's the Huanji Jingtao technique. Your Majesty, isn't this the secret exclusively for the imperial family's cultivation in the previous dynasty? 
Lu Bufan couldn't help but exclaim in surprise as he picked up the secret script in front of him. Not bad, it's the emperor's extreme shock and wave technique that the Li royal family doesn't pass on to the public. If you like it, you can all cultivate it. This technique is still very powerful. I can't cultivate it, so it's useless to keep it. Since that's the case, then I'm not polite. Lu Bufan was naturally overjoyed when he received Qin Shou's permission. And the other secret scripts that Qin Shou brought were actually on par with Huang Jijingto, otherwise he wouldn't have taken them out. Your Majesty, is it possible that you called us back specifically for us to choose these secret scriptures? Wan Qianjun held a book of the Great Diamond Sutra in his hand and couldn't put it down. After flipping through it, he asked his doubts. Of course not, I have a task for you to do, and it's done secretly. Upon hearing Qin Shou's words, the group also became serious. Your Majesty, what do you want us to do? Are we going to attack another country? After more than a year without fighting, I feel a bit uncomfortable. Chu Yang's words left Qin Shou feeling helpless as the other four of them rubbed their fists together. These guys are just following him to fight the downwind battle. It's so addictive. It's important to note that fighting is often a river of blood, and it's the common people who suffer. Moreover, Qin Shou believes that the current territory is already large enough. If we want to expand our territory, let the younger generation do it. They have all finished their work, aren't the younger generation left with nothing to do? I'm not asking you to go to war. I don't want to go to war, at least not at the moment. The country has just stabilized and its strength is increasing, so it's not appropriate to use force at this time. The five of them couldn't help but feel a bit disappointed upon hearing this, but they never doubted Qin Shou's decision. They didn't do it before, nor do they do now, and as for the future, they have no chance to doubt it. What I want you to do is to secretly search for any undiscovered spirit stone mines there. You also know that if a country wants to be strong, it must have countless experts. To cultivate countless experts, natural resources and treasures are indispensable, and spirit stone mines are also indispensable. Your Majesty, are you thinking? Zhou Jian couldn't help but take a cold breath, shocked by Qin Shou's bold idea. Jian has thought too much. I just want to cultivate some experts for the empire, and I have no intention of challenging those cultivation sections. Fighting them is like using eggs to strike stones. Do Qin Shou have any ideas? That's natural. But this idea cannot be expressed, after all, the current imperial court of the Divine Dragon Empire has no power to compete with the power of sections. If those sects knew that he had such thoughts, they would probably send someone to eliminate him. So he denied Zhou Jian's speculation, and Zhou Jian and others couldn't help but breathe a sigh of relief when they saw him deny. Although they are very proud, they are still so arrogant that they dare to compete with cultivators. Don't be fooled by the immense momentum of a thousand armies and horses, the bows and arrows shot by such a massive army can cover the sky and the earth. But it's not certain whether these bows and arrows can break through the true chi of a protective body as long as they have it. Of course, for those in the chi refining period, it is not within this category, but a sect is not just a cultivator in the chi refining period. The chi refining period is only the existence of the lowest combat power within the sect. So you must keep it secret and never leak any information. I believe that the territory of the Divine Dragon Empire is so vast that there are no undiscovered spiritual stone veins. After discovering the mineral veins, you will establish a base there under the pretext of training the army. I don't need to teach you these things, you should also know what to do. As for those who have been mined, we don't need to pay attention to them, so as not to expose our intentions. I can only trust you five, so this task can only be entrusted to you. After Qin Shou finished speaking, the five of them immediately clasped their fists and said, Your Majesty, rest assured that we will take immediate action once we return, and we will definitely not disappoint Your Majesty's high expectations. Well, there must be a careful plan, and trustworthy people should do it. 
This is very important and cannot be done carelessly. I understand. Qin Shou looked at the left and right arms that he had picked up with one hand and nodded in satisfaction. After further explanation, Qin Shou asked the five of them to take action and let out a sigh as they left. He knows it's not easy, but what if he's lucky enough? <laughs>